In this tutorial I'll be covering how I modeled this Rubbermaid wastebasket. This is a picture of the actual product itself. So I'll go ahead and get started by making a new part. And I have a part template for inches. And I'll click on the front plane. I'll insert a sketch picture. And I'm doing the front picture here. And I'm going to scale this picture to be 13 inches in height. And I'll change this. I'll unlock the aspect ratio. And change this to 10.1875, which is the actual dimension. And then I will take the width and paste it into the X location, divide it by 2, and put a minus sign in front of it. And you can see it placed it exactly in the center. And the transparency, I'll increase it to 0.6 to make it easy for my sketches to, sketch lines to appear on top of the sketch picture. On the right plane, I will insert another sketch picture. And I'll also scale this to be 13 inches in height. And then I'll unlock the aspect ratio and 7.25. Again, when you take photos, there's sometimes photographic distortion, and you have to compensate for them sometimes. So I'm going to copy and paste this in the X, divide it by 2 again, put my minus sign, and it places it exactly in the center. Again, transparency, so I can see the sketch lines over the sketch picture. And finally, I'll click on the top plane, I'll make another sketch, and put my last sketch picture in place. This time I am going to make the dimension 10.1875 here and then change the the height to 7.25 to match the other pictures that I've already placed in. And then I'm going to do the same trick, copy and paste the height into the Y, divide it by 2, put a minus in front, copy and paste the length paste into the X location, divide by 2, put a minus, and you can see how it centers it exactly. Now on the transparency, <clears throat> I'll click full image and make that 0.6, and then exit out of the sketch. And then I will label these. It's important to label because it's, it will make it easy if you're working on a team. They can understand and know what pictures are what, so they can hide and show at will <clears throat> if you get into the practice of it. It's, it will help you and other team members be able to know and work with your model. So then I am going to, on the front plane, I am going to make my first curve for the projected curve to make this compound curve here. So I'll use a three-point arc, and I'll click on the right plane, and I'll come on over here to that endpoint there. And then I am going to click on the center point of this arc, Every arc or circle will have a center point. And I'm going to hold down the control button. I'll click on the right plane, and then I can make that coincident. And it's important for that because you want this to maintain its tangency when you mirror it over. So I'm going to move this into place here. And then I will exit out of this sketch. And then I'm going to make on the top plane, I will add a spline for this. Now I have a saying, it's once, twice, make it nice. So here, once, click twice, and then I make it nice. So I click on the spline and this little arrow here will change the angle. I can make a, add a horizontal constraint. Click on the arrow and make it a vertical constraint. And that's the making it nice part. So it's about right there. And then I'm going to click on this endpoint and I'm going to hold down the control button which is multiple selection. Click on that endpoint, make that coincident, just make sure it's all lined up. And I'll do the same with this endpoint, just to make sure it's lined up with this right plane. Once that is all set, I'll exit out of the sketch, and I'm ready to make my first projection curve. So it's found under the Features tab, click on Curves, click Project Curve, and I'll select the other curve. This one was already pre-selected, which I didn't have to select both. Make sure you're on Sketch on Sketch, not Sketch on Face. And hit Check, and there's your projected curve. Then I'm going to make the lower curve down here on the top plane, so I'll Sketch on the top plane. And I will, this is kind of the bottom of the picture, uh, I'm sorry, the bottom of the wastebasket. I'm going to use Center Point Arc this time. And I'll click on the Center Point and then I will make a circle. doesn't matter right now because I'm going to add a dimension to this. And the bottom of that wastebasket is 3.125 inches 
in radius. <clears throat> and I'm going to make sure that this point looks like, you can see the coincident relations are added here, but I'm going to make sure this one is added to the right plane, I'm sorry, the front plane. And it is now. It's important to make sure all the correct relationships are added so that all of your curves will snap to one another and maintain proper associativity. So I'm going to click on the front plane. I will hit sketch and go to the front plane. And again, I'm going to go once, twice, and I'm going to make it nice. Now you notice I didn't go exactly to the point because I want to use SolidWorks to do the work for me. So I'm going to click on the point click on the line, holding the control button down, and hit pierce. See, it jumps right to that point. I'm going to be adding these constraints anyway, so I like to utilize SolidWorks to do the work for me instead of me hitting it exactly and taking the time to do that. So I will just adjust these curves a little bit, adjust this a little bit as well, and that looks good from that perspective. I'll exit out of that sketch, and on the right plane, I'll add another spline. So again, again, I'll go once, twice, and then I'll make it nice. Point and curve, and pierce it. And again, I'm clicking the point, hold down control, click on the curve, and it'll pierce it. Now there's a slight curve on the front dimension, so I'm just going to click on the line. And sometimes it's hard to see the little diamond shape, but usually if you zoom in, you can see it. So I put, added a little curve. It's very slight, hard to tell, but that little curve will make all the difference. Then I'll exit out of this sketch, and then I'm ready to make my first surface loft. So I'll click on Surfaces. If you don't have the Surface tab up, you can right-click and check or uncheck. So I'm going to check it. You can see the Surface tab shows up. And I'll click on Lofted Surface, and I'm going to start, actually, I'll clear this. I'm going to start on the front plane and go over to my right plane. And then I'm going to add my guide curves. Make sure you click in the guide curve area to add your guides. Otherwise, it'll throw it in the profiles. And then, <coughs> and then you can add the start end constraints. This is really important because you want, when you mirror it over, you don't want there to be a crease on these edges. So I'm going to add normal to profile in both of these directions. And if they're going the wrong direction, you can click these arrows to switch them. To check when you're done. And now we're ready to create a solid with this. So <clears throat> I'm going to click on the front plane, and I'm going to hit Sketch. And I'm going to click this face, and I'm going to convert it. So Convert Entities, it's under the Sketch panel. Convert Entities, I click that. It will convert this entire shape onto the right, on the front plane, or whichever plane you're, you're, you're sketching on. And then I can utilize this to extrude. So I'll click on Features, and I'll extrude the shape. And you can see you know, we can extrude this up here, but we want it to end, terminate at this surface. So under the Direction 1, I can change this to Up to Surface. And then I can select the surface. And you can see the extrude will terminate at that surface. <clears throat> it won't work on all cases, because some will have undercuts. But in this case, we don't have any undercuts for the surface, so this technique can work. Now. I want to add a little cut on the bottom of this, so I'm going to sketch on the top plane, and I'm going to click on this edge here, and I'll offset the edge. And I'm going to offset the edge by 0 0.065, 16th of an inch, and I'll close it in with these lines, so down to the origin, and then over to this end point. And I'm basically going to make a cut here, so features, I'll do extruded cut, and I'll make it go the opposite direction, and a depth of half inch. And then I am going to shell these walls. I'll shell the all, all these sides that I want to remove, these three sides. And I'll change the shell to 0 0.08 or 80 thousandths and shell it. Now I'll, I'll, I'll hide all the types so you can see what I did here. So that little cut made the floor, and this little floor gives extra rigidity for this waste basket. And then I'm going to hide the surface. This there's a surface shown here, and I'm going to hide that. Okay, So you can hide the whole folder or just hide the surface. And then it'll allow me to easily grab these edges. Oops. Sorry, that was not what I wanted to click. I wanted to click the fillet. And I'm going to change the fillet to 0 0.025 or 25 thousandths and click these edges here. Sometimes if you have the surface there, it'll try to click the surface edge instead of the solid edge, so, which is why I hid the surface. And then I'm also going to do these edges down here. One here, and then one on the underside. And then I will hit check. And then 
we have our our quarter of the wastebasket that we can mirror twice. So I'll click on mirror, and this time I'm going to mirror it over the right plane. I make sure to clear the features because I'm not only doing features. I'm just going to click on this whole body. So I change it to bodies to mirror, and then it will mirror that whole body. And I'll do it again, except this time I'm going to do on the front plane. Again, not features, but on the body, and it will mirror the entire thing here, the entire wastebasket. Now, if I want to add color, I can click on, I can right-click on the part, click on appearances, click on this part to add a, an appearance, and we have plastic and all these different appearances. I'm going to do plastic, and I'm going to open up this folder and move down to the clear plastic, and. I'm going to click on polypropylene plastic, which is semi-translucent. And under the illumination, or the color, I can change this to whatever color I want. You know, this light green, for example. You can even go in this area and pick whatever color. So I'm going to just select something close to this green here, for example, this green. And then I'll go under illumination, and you can change the transparency amount. Let's say maybe like 60%, and check. And this is the wastebasket. If you want to hide the lines, you can change these to that. You can add perspective if you want. And you can even add shadows if you would like under here. But So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. And happy modeling.